What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video. And in this video, now that we've finished covering Warrior format, let's make a tier list to rank the different decks in it and see what I think is the most competitive out of this group. There are a lot of decks in Warrior format that I covered on my channel, and there are probably even more beyond that that I didn't have time to cover. But I do think that, you know, Warrior Format is one of the most diverse early uh, Yu-Gi-Oh formats, and that makes it really fun. And the metagame is very underexplored, so this tier list could change in the future. But I'm excited to dive in and sort of give my thoughts on what the tier list looks like for April 2024. Now, before we dive into the decks themselves, uh, let's just go over the tiers here. So tier zero is if, you know, and I'm basing this off of tournament results largely, um, because I think that's the best indicator of where certain things lie in the meta. So just because I rank something as like tier two uh, or even rogue doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think it can do very well. Uh, I just means that in a sort of tournament, I don't really think it will do that good. So tier zero would be if uh, you expect to see pretty much all of the top cut of a tournament be in that one deck. Uh, that's a pretty good sign that that deck is so dominant that nothing else can really compete against it. Tier 1 would be if you expect to see this deck in the top cut of a tournament, but you would also expect to see other decks there. So there's not one deck that, you know, is just dominating the entire meta. Uh, you're likely going to see a bunch of different decks. Tier 2 is a deck that... You know, you might expect to see one or two in Top Cut, but you, it's kind of surprising when it happens. Uh, but you do expect that deck to perform relatively well at a tournament. You don't expect it to just lose all its games. Um, and so if you do see it in Top Cut, you're not really surprised by it. Rogue decks are decks that, you know, they can win a game here or there, but they're very much not really that likely to do well at a tournament. And uh, you will likely get a lot of losses with that deck. And Trash Tier is just decks that basically don't even have a win con. Like, if they ever pull off their game plan, it's really exciting, but it might not even win the game at that point. Uh, or even if it wins the game, it's probably not likely going to win the match. So those are decks that really struggle to get one match victory, let alone do well at a tournament. So that's sort of my idea of what these rankings mean. I know people have different ideas of this stuff, but this is just what I'm using for my tier list here. Um, so let's dive in to the decks here. And if we're talking about, uh, you know, just setting a baseline for what the good decks are in this format, uh, it's good to look at the last tournament results. And in that uh, tournament, uh, Goat Control showed itself to be uh, sort of, well, maybe not the best deck in the room, but it was very, very good. Uh, most, I mean, not, I think there were like either four or three people who were on Goat Control in the top eight. And that's very impressive. And this deck is very strong. Basically, the idea is that you're bringing out Thousand Under Strike off things like Metamorphosis um, on like a Scapegoat Token or a Sinister Serpent. And you're using that to suck up your opponent's stuff. Uh, now, the sort of recurability of Thousand Eyes is a bit worse in this format than in Goat format because of the way battle position rules work. Basically, in this format, uh, if you summon out a Tsukiyomi and flip a face-up attack position, Thousand Eyes Restrict, down to face-down defense position, you can't then flip summon it back uh, at the end of the turn. So what you have to do is you have to switch it into defense position before you summon the Tsukiyomi, because then you'll be able to do it. it it's very weird. Um, in practice, it does change how the deck works a little bit, but realistically, uh, it doesn't knock it out of the top tier, as we can see here and in the tournament that we held. So uh, I do think that this deck is probably sort of like the best deck in the room right now, but it's by no means tier zero. There are a lot of decks that have a good matchup against it, uh, and there's a lot of sort of counterplay. It's not doing anything like too, too unfair. Um, so I do think it's just a very solid tier one deck. And that's really cool to see because this format does feel very similar to GOAT. And when GOAT was first being explored, people thought that GOAT control was the best deck in that format. So I'm curious to see how that will change in the future because it very well might. But moving on, uh, now that we've sort of set that baseline for what I think the best deck in the room is right now, we can sort of discuss other decks' matchups into that and why I think they might lie at certain tiers on this list. Uh, first up uh, in discussing this, we've got water uh now i'm gonna put water in tier two water did win a past tournament but that tournament was much smaller than the one we recently held and i do think that water is it, it just had a lot going against it um it is it does have access to some very powerful plays like using salvage to get back powerful tools like yomi ship um or just oh, mother grizzly to go into other water things in your deck but uh, I don't know. It just feels underpowered. I mean, you do get to use Abyss Soldier more often than a lot of other decks in the format. But if you are playing a slow enough deck like Go Control, that deck can also play Abyss Soldier. So you sort of lose out on the value there. Um, I don't know. This deck is, like, cool, but it doesn't really... 
uh, make it to tier one for me. I do think it's definitely tier two though. It did win a tournament, as I said, and in the hands of a great player, it can be very strong and set up a very powerful board. But as is, I don't think it's quite in tier one right now. Moving on, we got Warrior. I think Warrior is definitely in tier one. Uh, this is just sort of like the standard Warrior list, so very similar to what you'd see in a Warrior list in GOAT format. And I think this deck is very good. Um, GOAT Control has a somewhat good matchup against Warrior decks. Um, but, you know, I do still think that the Warrior deck is independently strong enough that if we get enough good Warrior players playing in this format, uh, they'll definitely be able to take it to new heights. And I could definitely see this winning a tournament in the future. Next, we've got, uh, we've got Chaos. Uh, this can include Chaos Control. It can include Chaos Turbo. I'm just sort of lumping the Chaos decks together. I know they're very different. Uh, you know, uh, they, they do different things. But I think <clears throat> that all the Chaos decks really are in Tier 1. Um, Chaos Turbo has a relatively decent matchup against Goat Control. But Chaos Turbo also is really hampered uh, in this form by not having Delinquent Duo, not having uh, Graceful Charity. Um, it does have other tools like Painful Choice and Mirage of Nightmare uh, are very good for the deck. But not having access to that Graceful Charity or the um, Delinquent Duo that your opponent might have to make your Thunder Dragons and Night of Seals stronger uh, is definitely a blow for the deck. And I think it shows. Like, uh, there weren't really... I mean, there was someone playing Chaos, but it wasn't quite Chaos Turbo in the top 8 of the last tournament that we held. So, uh, I don't think that Chaos Turbo is as dominant in this format as it is in GOAT format. And th that being said, I think it's still Tier 1. But uh, I think that this is much more of like... Uh, the, the tier one sort of a tournament can go between any of these sort of three decks and maybe even some other decks in the format as well. Uh, Chaos Turbo definitely isn't quite as unfair as it is in GOAT format. Moving on, we got Stein decks. Stein, I'm going to put in Rogue. Uh, now you can slot Stein into a more powerful deck like Reason Gate Turbo um, and probably see some success there. But uh, I'd honestly say that like most Reason Gate Turbo decks should not be playing Stein. Stein just didn't really do enough for that deck to increase the ceiling of it. And most Stein decks themselves are not really the best. They can pull off their combo occasionally, um, but their combo does take a lot to go into it. And if it does fail, then you're down 5,000 life points in a very vulnerable spot. So I'm going to put it in Rogue. I don't quite think it's at Tier 2 just yet. Maybe if people uh, tinker with the builds more and make sort of a more cohesive Stein strategy, it could be better. But uh, right now, I think it's just Rogue Tier. Next up, we've got Gear Freed. So this is sort of a variant on Warrior, uh, where it plays Blast with Chain and Gear Freed as well to uh, provide a bit more control. I'm going to put this in Tier 2. You know, Gear Freed, I think, is a pretty good deck in this format. Uh, I think that it can win games, and when you get Gear Freed up with the Blast with Chain, it can be very good. But I do think it's less powerful than the standard Warrior deck, and because you're playing things like Gear Freed or Blast, which can break in the wrong situations, uh, then I do think that it is uh, slightly less good than some of the other decks on this list. So uh, I'm going to put it in Tier 2 for that reason. Next up, we got Horus. Horus, I think, is pretty fun. I'm also going to put this in Tier 2, probably near the bottom of Tier 2, because it can brick quite a bit if you draw into your higher-level Horuses too early. Um, but I like playing Horus in sort of like a Goat Control shell, so it's sort of carried by the power of Goat Control when it does brick. And when it doesn't brick, you've got these other sort of powerful boss monster payoffs um, with your horses level 8 shutting down spells entirely, which is really strong, and level 6 just being unaffected by spells, which is also really powerful. So I do like this deck um, quite a bit. I think it's pretty fun and can be pretty explosive. That being said, I don't think it's quite in the tier 1 status because it is a little bit gimmicky and it can brick on the pieces that I mentioned, but I do think it's better than Rogue for sure. Next up, we've got Makura, which I'm sort of just using in the catch-all for any alt-win con deck. So this can include Magical Science FTK, it can include Empty Jar, uh, it can include Last Turn, it can include a variety of decks that I haven't even shown off on the channel. And I'm going to put this in Rogue. I think maybe slightly above uh, Stein, because the Makura decks are doing their own thing, and when they do go off, there's really no way to stop them. It's just a matter of, like, how consistently they go off, right? And that is a big problem for these decks, where they're sort of feast or famine. Uh, either you win on the first turn, or you hard lose the game. Now, there are sort of degrees to this, right? Scientist is a lot more vulnerable than something like Empty Jar, for instance, because Empty Jar, if you just set a Cyber Jar, that's still pretty good if your opponent doesn't have a way to out it. Um, 
but I do think that like these decks aren't quite at tier two or tier one yet. Uh, people just haven't built them uh, in ways that make them consistent enough to uh, rise up in the tier ranking here. But I could definitely see in the future people experimenting with this more. I mean, Makura is in this format, and that's a card that there's a lot of different degenerate things you can do with it if you manage to figure it out. So I could definitely see people sort of getting more eyes on this and figuring out a better build that you know catapults this to higher success. Next up, we got Reason Gate Turbo de decks. Uh, I'm really tempted to put this in tier one. Uh, I think I actually will put it in tier one. The reason for this being, and this this may seem weird because there's only one Reason Gate Turbo person uh, in the top eight of the last tournament. And, you know, that was sort of a janky deck. It was playing like Dark Magician, Buster Blader, Fusion Gate to go into like Dark Paladin and stuff. And it was a really, really sick deck list. Uh, but there were only two people playing Reason Gate Turbo in the last tournament. Um, it was that player and myself. And the only reason I didn't top was because I'm like hard misplayed. And that is a skill issue on my part for sure. I don't necessarily think that is against the deck. So given that sort of representation, uh, I do think that like if more people play this deck, it could definitely, um, you know, top a lot more in the future. And hopefully people will experiment with this deck more because I do think it's really good. Now, its go control matchup is not the best, which does sort of hamper it a little bit in this format. But given that there's no Lightning Vortex in this format, there's no real way to out a big Reason Gate board that your opponent might set up. And this deck is just very, very explosive. So I think this deck is very really powerful. Uh, I hope that more people experiment with it in the future because I think it's just one of the sort of, I don't know about sleeper decks, but uh, I because I think it's on people's radar, but like I do think it's one of the most underexplored decks in the format. I definitely think that people can raise this to higher heights in the future. Next up, we've got Pyramid Turtle, and this is sort of like Dead Rat decks. Um, I think Dead Rat can be kind of fun in this format. I showed it off in one of my videos, and I think it's not terrible, uh, especially because like Ryukoki can crash into BLS and get rid of that too. Um, but you will take a lot of life points if you do go for that play. And with Triple DD War Lady in the format, it's in kind of a rough spot. I think I'm going to put it at top of Rogue. It could definitely rise to Tier 2, but we just haven't seen people experiment with this deck enough. Um, so I think that, like, in the future I could definitely see it rising. But right now, it's just sort of a fun Rogue strategy. They can win games here or there. But realistically, it's kind of underpowered compared to a lot of the other decks in the format. Next up, we've got uh, Return decks. So this can be... Uh, either Chaos Return, it can be Warrior Return, uh, it can be, there's a lot of different ways to build this deck. I think that this, if not in Tier 1, it's top of Tier 2. I'm going to put it in Tier 1 because there was someone who topped with it last time, and I think with more people playing it, it could definitely top in the future more as well. Like, this is a deck I would not be surprised at all to see in the top, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of representation for this in the top because it is just a very explosive deck. Um, I personally gravitate more towards the control version of it, which I do think is the best. But uh, if you want to go the more aggressive route as well, that can be very, very good too. And there are just a lot of different things you can do with this deck. So I do think that it does belong in Tier 1. Um, and again, it's it's sort of like one of those decks like Reason Gate where like not too many people were playing the Chaos Return deck in the last tournament. And it still managed to top, which shows that it definitely has a lot of potential here. So we've got a pretty stacked Tier 1. And I'm going to add another deck to Tier 1. Um, just, well, maybe I should add it to tier two because like really no one played this in the last tournament, but uh, I'm going to break my own rule here. I'm going to put burn in tier one as well. Uh, I think burn is really, really powerful in this format. I mean, if you've got go control as the best deck, uh, a deck that, you know, sort of hard benefits from your opponent having scapegoat tokens is really good. Um, and when I say burn, I'm talking about panda burn, which is why it benefits from ha your opponent having the goat tokens. First of all, it builds into, um, your secret barrel plays, your just search plays, etc. but also it buffs up Gekigari panda a lot, which is very nice. The one thing about goat is that it can stop your, like, Ojama tokens from going through, but realistically, like, you don't really care about that. You just care that your opponent has tokens on their side of the field. And also, like, you know, you can use your tokens to disrupt your opponent's meta plays, right? You can stop your opponent from getting out these scapegoat tokens. So there's a lot you can do with Burn. I think it is really, really strong. Not really many people were playing it in the last tournament, if any. Um, and I think that it definitely uh, could consistently top uh, tournaments in the future. So that's going to do it for the tier list here. And... I think the fact that we've got the most decks uh, in this uh, format in Tier 1 shows how underexplored the format is and how undefined the meta is. Because I really did not feel right putting any of these decks below Tier 1 because I definitely think they have the power level to be here. Um, it's just that not many people were playing these last three decks. And so it's kind of tough to sort of categorize them. Because I do think 
that, like, these decks deserve to be in Tier 1, but, uh, without people playing them, they might fall to Tier 2 in the future, but I, I'm just putting this together to give people an idea of what to potentially play in the next, uh, Warrior Format tournament whenever that happens, because I do think that this format does deserve more tournaments. I think it's really, really awesome. Uh, I think that a lot of people will enjoy it a lot, uh, especially if you like GOAT format. Uh, this is sort of like another version of GOAT format that's a lot more underexplored, so if you missed the expiration GOAT format, um, then I think that, like, this is definitely for you. And it, it's just really fun. So I hope that this sort of inspires more people to play the format more. Um, and yeah, if you want to sort of see any of the deck lists here, uh, to serve as a starting points, uh, then you can check out my videos on this format. Um, and I have some deck lists there that you might want to check out. And of course they're not perfect, but, uh, they might serve as a good starting point for you. But uh, that's going to do it for this tier list. I will post a link to this tier list in the description down below if you want to make your own tier list, um, just to see what other people want to do with the tiers here. Um, also, let me know what you think about this tier list down below in the comments. Um, do you think that, you know, maybe I sort of overranked some of the decks in tier one, or do you think I underranked some of the decks in tier two or rogue? Uh, I, I always look forward to hearing what you all think down below. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please do subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to support me directly, uh, then I do have a Patreon link in the description down below. And so big shout outs to my patrons, Tyler Compton, Dump Truck. GMIFS, Rincewind, Porkchop Coon, and Brendonker. It really means a lot to me that you support me in this way and it encourages me to make more videos like this. If you want to play Warrior Format or any other format that I feature on the channel, also head on over to the YGF from Zero Discord. Uh, link is in the description down below. It's a great place to play games in these formats and also play in the tournaments that I hold, either the weekly locals or the monthly uh, bigger retro tournaments. Uh, this month will be an Imperial format and that's coming up, so definitely sign up if you want to uh, play in that. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it as always. And until next time, I've been Ben from YGO from Zero. I'm signing off.